I come from a background of painting or painters. My father, my uncle, my brother, they're all painters. Um, I don't like painting very much myself, but I do draw. Um, so I tend to focus a lot on features. Um, I tend to really love close shots, um, soft focus uh, or deep focus. And I do have a background in music and in sound. I used to do post-production sound, location sound and post-production sound. Um, and so that's something that I've, that's very important to me in my filmmaking in, is the use of sound. Um, in the film that I have here at the Silicon Valley African Film Festival, Taharuki, um, which is also known as Suspense, I, it's a film that is set in Kenya, but I shot it in Brooklyn. And um, in order to create Kenya in Brooklyn, um, aside from production design, which I had a Kenyan production designer help um, to send us some things that we could use, I also had a sound designer in Kenya who sent me sound bits and sound recordings, and I spent quite a bit of time um, developing a sound palette that we could use to create an environment that was not originally there. We shot downtown Brooklyn and we needed it to be a remote area in Kenya during a war time. Um, so those are things that I think to help define um, the kind of filmmaking that I make, regardless of the story. I mean, things obviously change depending on the story, the, the speed, the pace, the, the mood, the feel, um, maybe even the texture, but those are the things that I tend to carry along with me. Okay. I grew up with a lot of storytelling in, in my life, in my family. Um, I have a lot to say and I grew up with people who had a lot to say and had very interesting lives, very dramatic lives, very picture and movie type lives um, that nobody knows anything about. Um, and I think there's something wrong with that. I think there's something wrong with um, only experiencing a country or a continent through the news, <laughs> through tragedy and strife and animals and white people's experiences. <laughs> um, there's many, many, many holes that have, that are left in that kind of a situation. And so I think that's my work. I, I've taken that on as my work. Um, I see that as the work that all of us have to do as filmmakers, as, as artists in general, because we do tell a lot of those stories even with our music, um, with our poetry, with our writing. Um, now there's things like YouTube, which didn't exist when I was a young person getting ready to make films. Um, I mean, YouTube didn't really exist even eight years ago, so, um, but not only to educate the purpose of my filmmaking at least, and what I see as other people's filmmaking is not for the purpose of educating foreign people, white people, about what our lives are like, um, but being able to reflect on our own lives for ourselves and for each other. Um, one of the things that I love about media, that I love about the internet, about YouTube, about Facebook, about Twitter, is that we're able to see each other, we're able to experience each other. Growing up in Kenya as um, a person with Tanzanian heritage, I would tell my friends stories about what it was like to go to Tanzania, what my home was like, what my cousins were like, my relatives, stories about my family, that they had no idea, they had no frame of reference as to what what that meant, you know. We were foreign, foreign land, and we're hours away across the border. Um, and now, because we have social media, um, because of the movement of hip hop, for example, that's happened in East Africa, where we're listening to each other's music and listening to each other's lyrics and hearing people talking about how they love and how they don't love and how they party and whatever it is that they do, um, we're beginning to learn about each other and learn about, okay, so that's how people in Uganda get down, that's how people in Rwanda get down, you know, um, and that's, that's huge, that's huge, that's huge in terms of understanding each other. We're not, Africa was never really set up for us to really travel um, across countries. It's very expensive to travel within Africa. It costs more to travel one hour from Kenya to Tanzania than it is to travel from New York to California. 
that's it costs four hundred and fifty dollars for a round trip ticket for one hour you know that's that's ludicrous <laughs> but I don't have to physically travel anymore because I can see I can I can watch your videos I can listen to your music a lot of other things aside from the news to understand aside from foreign news to understand um, what's going on within my, uh, with on, within the continent within my country amongst my peers amongst people who look like me who might think like me who might have similar ideas and experiences as mine or completely vastly different experiences than mine um, and to understand what what that's like and what they're going through I think there's untold value in that and I see myself as somebody who whose job it is is to help to foster that um, and to create our own stories and our own voices um, in how we tell our stories and, and how we see ourselves. Um, we've never really had the opportunity to do that.